Om Lokaha Samastaha Suki Nobavan. Too may all beings be happy and peaceful. May all investors be divinely guided. May you be prosperous in all ways. Welcome everyone. It's Phoenix. It is Wednesday, March 1st. I hope that the day is going well for you so far. We are at the start of a new month. So as expected, usually at the month end, there's some sort of shifting around. The price can be a little bit wonky. Price action was definitely wonky yesterday. We had a pretty strong surge early uh, in the uh, after the monthly close. And actually, I wanna show you this monthly chart here. But first, of course, none of this is financial advice. These are my own personal views. And if you're interested in learning more about my work, you can find my courses on my website. So this monthly candle here, we actually swung fail the January highs. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, so usually when this happens, you see this sort of doji formation here on the January candle, picture perfect doji, looks like a, a perfect cross there. I wonder if that was intentional. And we'll see now if we get a bearish, a red candle here for the month of March, this is what is known as an evening star formation. Now it is sort of out of context because it's not in a pre-existing uptrend, but still, um, I still think it has some weight. So if you saw this on a daily or a weekly, it would be potentially looking bearish, but we're not bearish yet. We're still in sort of no man's land uh, while Bitcoin makes up its mind. But if we start to get back below this January, uh, this January level here around 23,150, which is both the open and the close of the month, then that could be uh, give a lot more weight to the downside. Now targets, if you're just looking at this from a swing perspective, one obvious target would be right here, 21,381. And then we have the mid range here, 19,843. That's the mid of this January candle. This candle is still very much in play here. And then we're looking at potentially the, uh, the top of this uh, December, okay? The very high of that month. That's 18, around 18,400, which also coincides with uh, the major bulk of the this range here, this being the deviation, what's underneath it there. So uh, just something to to pay attention to in the coming in the coming weeks. So let's actually take a look and see now what's going on at present. Now, I said to my group yesterday that the Dixie and the SPY aren't really having a whole lot of weight on crypto right now. And um, there's sort of what some people would call decoupling every single time this happens, but it just is a temporary thing. And it's it makes sense when stocks are also pretty volatile. They have been the last couple of days, uh, but for the most part, they are decidedly down. Dixie has been in sort of a correction the last couple of days, but for the most part, it has been up, right? So it seems like it could be finding support at this weekly level here, um, especially after this strong rejection today, we will see, we shall see. But always, always give these charts, uh, take them with a grain of salt because they're just for added confluence. Now, another chart that I wanted to show you that is really curious to me right now is uh, the total, not the total three, but the total, we're looking at the, the market cap for all of cryptocurrency. And if we just take a look at this trend line here, okay, once this breaks, it looks like, again, we're near the top of this range here, ran this liquidity here, okay? And now it seems to be still very much in an uptrend, okay? So on the higher time frames, we're still in an uptrend, the total crypto market cap. But if it breaks down below this diagonal, it's likely going to be game over for many of the alts, okay? And so that's just something to keep an eye on, to watch maybe another measure of confluence moving forward. So. Now let's take a look at Bitcoin on the daily and we'll bring up our levels and let's have a look and see what we can see, okay? So on the higher, again, on the higher time frames, if you're just taking the last month, month and a half in, in context, then this is still an uptrend. There's still, it's still undeniably an uptrend. We have the higher high, higher low, higher high, maybe a higher low, and maybe it's gonna make another push up, okay? But then if we take a look and we see on the, the lower time frames, we start to look on the 4H, ooh, look at that. Okay, look what's happening here. If we just, again, if you look at this whole, this, this end of it here looks bullish, okay? But if you look at the last week, week and a half, uh, what is going on with Bitcoin and Ethereum? Well, we have, 
we have sort of this level here, this range which seems to have broken down, but then we have a lower high and then we have a lower low. Is this potentially a, another lower high? It's possible. And actually this looks even clearer on Ethereum. Same sort of maybe distribution range and then the lower high, lower low, lower low, maybe a lower high, okay? Or maybe we're just range bound and I'm just starting to lose my mind because that's how the price action has been for the last couple of weeks. And uh, we don't really have a whole lot of clarity just yet, uh, but there's a few scenarios that we could be watching for. One in particular, let's look at Bitcoin first. Sorry to jump around today, but that's just the way it's going. It's been all over the place and on so many levels. And we're here where I live, the weather has been absolutely outrageous for throughout this time, <laughs> for the entire duration of this time, we're getting hammered with rain right now. So uh, Bitcoin, what are some, some long and short uh, triggers that we might be looking for, for me personally? For Bitcoin, let's pull up, actually let's pull up our, not Fridays, I wanna look at the monthly. Okay, so we are still above the monthly open here and we're above the weekly open, but starting to get back underneath here okay this isn't necessarily a trigger in and of itself but conservative entries could be somewhere down 22 8 or 900 here 22 900 breaks down below from there and then the targets as discussed okay that would be conservative aggressive would be the break of oh we're not going to use that trend line that's not really valid okay a long situation would be back above 24k okay and then holds here then we're likely headed to the mid maybe up to the top maybe it deviates above one last time as mentioned maximum pain would be visiting above this 25 200 level maybe starting to head up to 26 27 this is the mid here of i have to actually continue to adjust this chart because we're looking at uh, this next level of resistance at 28,800 here. So it's a mid between here and this 25,250 level. So that's possible. We don't want to rule it out. And that would actually make a nice, pretty sort of triple tap for Bitcoin before heading down. I don't want to completely rule that out, but still leaning to the downside, mainly because of what I'm seeing with stocks. But again, you never know, they could completely do the opposite. Usually it does resolve within a day or two if there is sort of a an inverse correlation with the SPY and Bitcoin or the Dixie. Well, the Dixie is an inverse correlation, but if it is correlated, I don't know if that makes any sense to any of you, but <laughs> it is what it is. So with Ethereum, uh, what would we be looking at? There's one diagonal in particular that seems to have held up pretty well here and it's this one, okay? with the exception of this deviation, but um, you could see it spike below, but got back above. And here also um, it's holding us support right now. But if that breaks down and we get back below this monthly level again, the monthly open here, then this would be where I'd be looking to do my business. Okay, this is right around 1600, uh, 1600 area for a shorts. Okay, and then targeting down uh, much lower, probably looking at the mid again for, if you take the mid for the monthly candle, which I'm not gonna do here, it's somewhere around 14 something, that would make it, that would make sense as an obvious first target. And then it could head a lot lower from there. We, we shall see, depends on the momentum, how quickly the moves are happening. Of course, we're seeing a strong momentum, but then it fizzles out pretty quickly. That's what's been happening the last few days. Um, but Ethereum also, again, depending on how you're looking at this, if you look at it from a daily perspective, still looks bullish. But if you look, if you start to really narrow it down on the lower time frame, sorry, the lower time frames, I'm confusing myself. The lower time frames, you'll see, uh, it could be could be breaking down, but it definitely needs to hold below this level for the bearish thesis to to hold its weight. So far, it has but it's sort of in an indecisive mode here. You can see that by wicks in either direction. Usually that's a no trade zone for me, um, but I'm making an exception today. And if you're in the C3 group, you know how I'm positioned right now. So this could be coming up here. And if it does get above 1675 and then holds, then we're targeting again, the mid of this range around 1700 and then eventually 1727. And then eventually if Bitcoin can get above 25200, if grandpa gets some, gets its second win, then we can look at maybe 1800 as 
a, f a next target for Ethereum. So looking to break above 1675, which also happens to be the January high. Okay, so um, Ethereum actually did not did not breach the January high uh, in that that run up yesterday. So uh, basically, we're in a chop zone right now. It's it's mostly I would say it's a no trade zone uh, unless you want to get chopped around or unless you're willing to you have high conviction you're willing to hold your trades for potentially several days okay or maybe into next week we shall see um so this you can see it's very clearly this is the value area here this is where the bulk of the price action is occurring so we want to get outside of that to to do our business so again either down here or up here okay so until this, until we start to see really some clarity with Ethereum and Bitcoin, then there's really no point in addressing the alts. Now I do have some small short positions on alts. You can see one of them here. Okay, so Injective is, seems to be, again, a lot of the alts, if you look, there's actually more clarity on alts because we see a series of lower highs and lower lows, okay? But then if you just, if you zoom out, it is in a, in a larger context here. We don't have a whole lot of clarity, but this does look to be a, a distribution pattern. And as we know, if Ethereum really breaks down, once Ethereum breaks down, I should say, these are really gonna fall. And uh, with Injective and DYDX and Optimism, Matic, all of them are very similar in where they are right now. And if you if you look at this from the from the daily time frame here, then it looks it looks bullish, but you have to take this in the larger context. So I mean, obviously, if injective comes back up above here for 430, starts to really clear above this level, uh, then we'd be looking at more upside. Personally, I would not want to long this uh, at any time. Uh, but if it starts to really continues to break down and, and continues to show the same pattern that it has been, then we're looking to target the top of the range is 280. And then the mid of this range here would be around 195. So these are more like swing targets. <clears throat> and that's sort of how I'm positioned with altcoins where I'll have a wider stop and I'll just sort of let it ride and see what happens with it. And if I get stopped out, it's not a huge deal. It's not a big loss. Um, but whatever I'm willing to risk is what I'm putting on the table. And so that's just my strategy. So with Injective, I think that this one actually has been weaker and you sort of get a feel for which are stronger and weaker and they go through their phases. But in general, because I've been trading this one a lot, it's at a point where it seems to be maybe peaking out. Uh, we shall see, I don't know for sure. I don't have a magic crystal ball, uh, but conservative entries could wait for for the breakdown here and you could even hone in you could start to look on the lower time frames and wait for a breakdown beneath the th this 366 level maybe it comes back retests okay so here we are here breaks down retests and that proves to be resistance there and that that would be oh, i can't draw straight lines with this that would be support or sorry resistance flipping into support and then back into resistance so we have that SR flip and that would give some confirmation. Um, but we saw a big strong run up yesterday. And so I'm anticipating potentially we, we revisit. Now DYDX, this one has really been confounding me for the last couple of days, especially <clears throat> lost some money on this one, gave back a lot of my gains from last week, just on this one. And that's just how it goes with these alts, you know, but actually it looks to be falling nicely right now. Here's my average entry on this one. Why did I enter this again after, <laughs> after losing some money on this? Well, because look at this range here and look at this. Okay, we had, I don't wanna say this is a swing fail, but it did actually come above these highs here and it did actually revisit this high here. So uh, if it does run back up, there's no way there's no telling how high it could go because obviously you saw these wicks here so these are lower market caps they're gonna there's gonna be thin liquidity they're gonna be able to push them around easier that's that can work for you or against you so always keep that in mind and i definitely do as well and there's days where i say to myself why am i even trading these alts it's not even worth my time and for the most part, I'd say that's true. But in this sort of a situation, it is unique because I'm essentially what I'm telling you is that I'm waiting for a much larger fall. And I think it could be any day now.
It could be today. It could be after, before I even get to publish this video. Um, it could be tomorrow. I think sooner or later, March, I believe, is going to be a bloody month. I do not have a magic crystal ball. I'm willing to be wrong. Um, and it's just, they've been dragging this on for a while now. I don't know how much longer they can do this for, realistically speaking. So that's my take on DYDX. Of course, it could come back up. It could retest this level again. Maybe we get another wick up here, but notice where my stop is on this. Okay, good luck getting me. Okay, if they can get it up here, they can have the money. It's fine, no big deal. Okay, and again, not risking my life savings on this. The whole objective of this bear market and, and trading in general is just, it's, it's to thrive. First, you wanna survive, have the risk management so that you are able to survive and not lose it all in a day or a week, but then to find ways to thrive. And so I am perfectly happy letting this chop around and not trying to catch every move and hopefully, eventually, it revisits, it completely round trips. I think that's, I, I mean, if you look at this, is it really all that improbable? If, if it did this, it could do the opposite if the conditions change. And that's that's the way it goes with all coins. That's why they're so enticing to me. Same with Injective, it's the same pattern, okay? So if I'm right on DYDX, I'm most likely right on Injective. Optimism too. Optimism now is retesting. Optimism has broken down. This actually had a nice short running from here. Should have just held on to that short, took some profits down here. Um, I'm actually back in it now. So, uh, but this one actually has not been seeing those those really rapid uh, increases that some of the alts have seen. It is showing more relative weakness. And also on the the higher time frames, you see again, we start to see, we see what? The same pattern, okay? the series, the market structure is changing, okay? Just looking at this here, the market structure is changing. And now we have the rejection of this key weekly level here. And this is a short trigger for me, okay? That's a short trigger. So I entered here, okay? So that's, there's a trade for you if you want, you know, not, not financial advice, but that's just for me, that's, it makes sense to me, uh, but if you're looking at the whole chart here, maybe it doesn't make sense. I'm looking at this from a swing perspective, willing to be wrong, willing to watch it chop around. Matic, same deal, right? It's They're all in the same situation now. And Matic actually looks even more obvious than all of them. It, it looks like, well, of course they could run it up. You never know with Matic. I mean, it could run all the way back up here again. I'm prepared for that scenario. And then maybe they dump it down. Uh, but look what happened here. Look at how quickly this came down when it did finally decide that it was ready to come down. And this is just, I mean, imagine this this pattern here could, could work out if we flip this the other way, it could play out the same exact way, bring us down at least to this mid here, this 10164, and then maybe ultimately down to the 75 cents. Would that surprise you? If this was one big distribution and this was the final up thrust after the distribution, it wouldn't surprise me. And there's some strange coincidences around announcing uh, staff cuts right around the top of this. And this one is just, yeah, it's prime. It's prime It's prime for a, for a drawdown here. So pay attention to the monthly for Bitcoin. Mark your levels, pay attention to the total market cap, see if it can break. It's already looking like it wants to to maybe break, to, it's showing some weakness here. Maybe it bounces hard, then then we're not ready yet. Uh, but but showing weakness in general, SPY has been bouncing around. But overall, we see weakness on this chart. Overall, this is this is weakness. Okay, every rally is being rejected. You see this three days in a row now. We see these wicks on the SPY. Okay, so what would the obvious target be just from a technical perspective, not knowing anything about fundamentals would be somewhere in here. That would be the obvious next target. And then from there, potentially down 356. And then from there, maybe much lower. Okay, it's possible. But for all intents and purposes, we are range bound with the stocks, we are range bound with Bitcoin with Ethereum but you have to look at the larger ranges. This is a range, but then we also have another range here, okay? This is a range, 
okay? This is a range in here, but then this is also a range, okay? These are ranges. This is not a trending market. It's been slightly trending, okay? If you just look at the last couple of weeks, but if you look at, if you zoom out and you look for several months now, we have been range bound. So we are range bound until proven otherwise. And if you're near the top of a range, logic would tell you that it doesn't really make sense to long into this resistance level. Even if it does break above the range, it's gonna need a lot of strength. It's gonna need some, it's gonna need some confluence with the dollar and with the stock market in order to really start to push up and break above once and for all. The sentiment needs to shift dramatically in order for this to happen. And that has not happened from what I've seen yet. Prove me wrong. It's I could be wrong, but I'm just playing probabilities right now. So I hope that you found some insights from this, uh, this video. I haven't been doing live streams just because I've been trying to keep clear and stay focused on the charts in my trades. <laughs> and so uh, this, I hope that you enjoy this format. And again, if you wanna support me, just like the video. That's that's the first thing you can do. Give me a comment, uh, give me some, some inspiration because it, it really does keep me going right now. And yeah, have a beautiful rest of your day.